everybody, Kevin here from the Corporate Garage Podcast, back with a reaction video, and I saw a comment on our YouTube page that said, check out the band Solaris and the song The Keeper, because they love to respond to reactors, and I thought, it's not a bad idea, so we're going to go check it out, I have no idea who this band is, I honestly have not heard of them at all, until that comment came up, so I don't even know what I'm about to get into, so... Let's enjoy it. Let's have some fun. Before you do that, though, hit subscribe to the Corporate Garage Stream Podcast right down here. Brand new up to the podcast every single Tuesday and Thursday. And, of course, these Friday reaction videos as well. So, let's go. You are the best. Hmm. So, we can get, like, symphonic metal meets a little power metal here. I wonder if they're from Canada, or if they're up north in Wisconsin. I mean, lead singer's dress has more of that gothic look, so I'm thinking this is going to go symphonic at some point. Yep, there we go. I mean, you're always going to get... Rapid chugs. Angelic vocals. Malak over the top. Can she bring it in the chorus, though? Waiting for it. Was anybody else singing Angelic? I wasn't thinking it. Having the shredding guitar and the instrumental breaks helps keep the flow of the vocal style and the vocal pattern really well. Wait a minute, symphonic metal? Are they finished? Yeah, that's some good production work. I love me my drum fills. Maybe we need a little more of those angelic vocals coming in. A little more often. Come on, chuggy, 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 chuggy. But it still feels like the build. We get into something even grander. It was not easy staying quiet for the whole solo. Not at all.
I'll speak about the solo in the breakdown, though. The more symphonic, high pitch, angelic sound really does work. And I like how they're not overusing it here either. Well, friends, that's why we go into these absolutely blind. Because I had no idea what to expect on this song at all. Not the symphonic stuff, or the almost probably more than minute long solo, but that's what we got. Before we head into the breakdown, are you number one like Waluigi? <laughs> Did you enjoy when Rick turned himself into a pickle? I'm Pickle Rick! And you want to be a part of the podcast that Rolling Stone said initiates profound discussions with rock and metal artists, allowing fans to discover the creative workflow of their favorite musicians and understand the factors that make the band succeed or fall from fame. If you said yes to any of those questions, be sure to subscribe to the Corporate Rush Podcast right down here. We have brand new episodes of the podcast every single Tuesday and Thursday, showing off some of the biggest bands out there and some of the best emerging bands from rock and metal out there to you, showing you their new music, showing you what they think and getting in deep with any type of conversation we want. You want a great episode? Check out the one we just released with the ladies from The Warning. Cards up there, so go enjoy right after this. Thank you, everybody. And now, to the breakdown. Alrighty, so that was The Keeper by Solaris. And again, I had no idea what to go into this with or any kind of expectation. When I saw that comment on YouTube, I thought, you know, let's just give it a shot. Why not? So here's what I thought about it. For me, I'm not that big of like a symphonic metal guy. It just really doesn't hit on me. And hearing the vocal pattern, hearing the more melodic sensibility to it when it came specifically to the verses, but then overall with the chorus with more of the angelic tone to it, it really sat where I'm like, yep, this is symphonic metal for sure. And I'm not sure how much I'm gonna like this. When it came to the vocals though, this is the thing I really liked about it. When they opened up the chorus, they had a much more angelic flow to it. And it really had more of that incredible beauty that sometimes you really see a prevalent in symphonic metal. But they didn't overdo it. And that could have really taken the song in a different direction and be oversaturated. But it really didn't happen here. And I'm really happy that that didn't happen because it allows the song to really get a lot more on its own and not just sit in this same style that really is profound but can be overdone. Instrumentally, I mean the chugs in the back, the more consistent flow to it, it did keep a little bit more of that contrast to allow the vocals to soar as well. Just because, you know, when you notice that difference, it's gonna stand out. When we got to the build to the solo though, it's not like we were getting to a huge breakdown moment that just kept building and building and building. And when the solo came, may have been a little long, but again, that's just my personal taste. However, the overall different quality and shred that was going on there really worked out well. You saw a little bit of a touch of Eddie Van Halen style in there, maybe a little bit more towards the end, but what it allowed the overall song to do was have a little bit more of an identity going forward to really show that this band could potentially do a lot more with their sound, maybe mess with some other different inspirations or influences to really take this metal style they have and flow with it. So overall, maybe not necessarily my thing per se, but there are elements in here from the shredding guitar, from how they use that angelic vocal style and the overall contrast between the symphonic cleans and the overall heavier backing and the consistent pace behind it that really did stand out. So, I want to thank you guys for watching this. If you like it, hit the like button right down here. If you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button right down here. Thanks once again. This is Kevin, and I'm out.